Good morning, everyone. Um, I trust you're all well. I'd like to start by greeting everyone in the spirit of love. I mean, it is Valentine's Day after all. So uh, let's get some good energy and positivity. And I'm looking excited. I'm looking forward rather to this presentation. So welcome to the Plumbing Industry Business 101 webinar. And um, I'll just go straight into it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, just a brief, simple introduction of who I am. I go by the name of Renda Nechibuda. And I'm a former professional rugby player. Let's not even get into rugby. It was a tough week for my Pretoria team, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, went to institutions of higher learning. I'm passionate about media, but more than anything, I'm passionate about leadership. I'm a professional MC, and I've consulted for various um, industries, such as the mining industry. I'm super blessed to be part of this industry, which is the plumbing industry. And I guess in the presentation, you'll, guess, you'll get to understand as to why I say I'm blessed. So the purpose of this presentation, and I must just give a quick disclaimer, I'm not going to be rushing through it, but I'm not going to be covering all the slides that are in here, because you'll see as we go through, I will just explain, and I'll probably be covering some of the other slides on the basis of this time of but the purpose of this is to ensure that you understand your role as a role player within the plumbing industry. I think it's quite critical that you make you understand that your role has a magnifying effect. You know, it's a domino effect. So if you play it effectively, you'll add tremendous value. And to make you understand the importance of digitizing and adapting to the fourth industrial revolution. Now, I know some of you are probably going, oh, no, there we go again. Trust me, I'm going to try and explain this in the most simplest form, but to make you understand the value you can get out of this. And ultimately, the purpose is to make you reach your maximum capacity in your overall performance as a role player, which will ultimately assist in reaching maximum capacity for us as an industry. We want to go for gold. You know, we can't settle for number two because no one remembers number two. But jumping into it, my role as a the, uh, in the plumbing industry, I'm currently the public relations and stakeholder engagement manager. Now, this is just to obviously give you an understanding of what PR is about, but I'd like you to go to that third paragraph where it says, in simple terms, you know, my role here and amongst the people who are also within my team is to shift perception and build the brand. You know, we're here to change the perception of the industry. And I think we can be honest. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of when people think plumbing, it's just limited. It's a person wearing an overall and unblocking a train, you know? And I think once people get to understand and once we ourselves as industry role players understand that the significance and the value we add in this industry, I believe the perception will change. I mean, I have to say it automatically right now. I always use this, this is my bragging tool. As the plumbing industry, we are responsible for transporting the most valuable commodity on earth. The commodity that's more valuable than diamonds, gold, coal, whatever it may be that they brag about. We are responsible for transporting water. And I think once people understand that, they'll understand that without these guys, man, our lives are at risk. So that's why we're here. We are uh, creating various platforms to get the message out there in order to bring dignity, you know, that this industry requires. But before we get into it, I think it's quite important for us to have a common vision, irrespective of where we are and what we offer within the industry. The ultimate vision is to create a successful, highly professional, well-respected, all-inclusive, I have to jump in there, all-inclusive meaning we have cut the perception of saying that the industry is just for males. We have to include the, 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 the females because they can bring so much more value. I mean, we just have under... 3% of participation when it comes to females. So we haven't even reached our ultimate potential, but I'm not even talking about gender. We're talking about racial inequalities. We're talking about people living with disabilities. So inclusivity brings everyone together, young people as well, the youth, the next generation. So all inclusive is a key one there. 
an active, fast-growing, attractive plumbing industry in South Africa, ultimately aiming to become a global example by reaching gold status within our plumbing practices. If we can be number one when it comes to plumbing, why can we not be as an example when it comes to the plumbing industry? And why do we have to wait for people abroad to give us certain things where we can set an example only through understanding the vision and understanding our roles and playing it effectively? So what are the objectives as well? And um, the key objectives are to change the perceptions, as I said, once we can change the perception of how we are viewed, I believe automatically there's value for value. You know, we want to enhance the channels of communication within the industry role players, especially the plumber. And I have to say, this, as the plumber, I'll get to the role players now. As the plumber, you're a significant part of the role players. You are the heartbeat and you'll get to understand why. But enhancing the exciting vision around the plumbing industry that will encourage and inspire activity in reaching that vision. And what I mean by that is everyone can add value, can contribute into the desired outcome, the vision. And it's not just necessarily limited to certain people or you know certain levels. I think everyone can add value there. That's participation. And introducing the next generation of plumbers aligned to the main vision of the industry. There's a whole lot of value with the experienced plumbers, but for the success factor and consistency within this industry and longevity, survival of the industry, we have to transfer knowledge, focus on the upcoming generation so that they don't compromise the current value that the people with experience have contributed. Expanding current networks within the media industry. You might not think the media doesn't affect us, but it does. And I'm so excited as to what the PIRB as well as IOPSA have done in investing into ensuring that uh, all our contribution and all our value within the industry is exposed to the mass public. Because at the end of the day, the people who are in the mass public are people who are affected by the industry, just like me and you because they're either consumers, they're a role player, or they are part of it and they're active members. So, and also ultimately placing plumbing industry in the same pool as large industries. You know, it's, it's so unfortunate that people will take a lawyer more seriously than a plumber, whereas that lawyer needs to survive. <laughs> and what I mean by surviving is they have to poop in that tap water to drink, they use the toilet, you know? And that's just, I'm using law as an example. There's so many other industries that are taken seriously and are given more priority as to ours. But because the industry has invested in its value, I can promise you now things are about to change. So um, this slide, I'm going to really pass through. This is one of the role players. Um, I don't want to really stick to going through each role player. I'd rather go through this role player. I think this role player is critical. The plumber or the active participant in the plumbing industry more aligned to the technical work. I think ultimately it's so important for you as a plumber or anyone who's actually implementing the work, you know, to become a proud plumber that's proud to be part of this industry. You see, you give what you reflect. And if you are not proud of this industry, the consumers and everyone around can sense that and they can feel that energy. And that's also a contributing factor to the perception that's negative. You see, once you are proud to be a plumber and you conduct your services with a level of um, high work ethic and passion and love, this energy has a way of just shining out there and people seeing us and perceiving us in a lighter note and taking us seriously because they can see that there's passion within this industry. Look at the performance. Look at how this person is conducting themselves. They're not depressed, <laughs> you know, that they're not uh, doubting that this is what they're meant to do. But when you reflect that you are in the right place, because this industry is the perfect position for you, and this industry affects the humanity, you, you will give value for us, you know, and people will take us seriously. And that goes on to the next part, which is becoming professional. It's not an easy step. Um, we are all... Um, finding ourselves in different positions of life. Um, you know, we're not in the same economic status 
And it's no, not necessarily, I don't want to go into the nitty gritty, but that's the reality of life. But the aim and the objective is to become professional. You see, once you give a professional view of yourself, people automatically take you in a professional manner. They don't just think of you when they need you, but they remember you even when they open the tap because they're like, man, a professional handled this. They remember you when they open the shower and they can feel that heat and they can feel the warm water and they're like, this is a professional that did this. So it's quite, and that's not just technical, it's so broader. It goes into the broader specs of the plumbing industry, but you must become professional for us to be taken as a professional industry. If we're not professional, it creates a limitation in people comprehending the value that we do. So it's quite critical. And then understanding that you are the heartbeat of the industry. I noted that I think there's someone who raised their hand. So we'll obviously jump into the questions afterwards. But understanding that you're the heartbeat of the industry. You see, if the plant doesn't exist, man, oh man, just imagine yourself right now or every single plumber in this country um, not existing. If the plumber didn't exist, we find ourselves in a, a position of trouble. And it, you can, we can look at all the other role players, consumers, government, private sector, all of that. We can look at that, but they don't have the role to play if the plumber is not in its role and its perfect position. So it's quite important that you remember you give life to this industry. If you are not doing it perfectly, you are creating distortion. And uh, becoming qualified and registered, that gives credibility, you know? Yes, our stats aren't uh, showing the majority, but we are growing and we're getting somewhere. And it's also important to celebrate the small wins. And more than anything, meeting the standards and becoming ethical in your work. Making sure that, you know, you don't compromise, not even when people are not watching, you never compromise and ensuring that we're up to standard because that shows that, hey, there's quality assurance that gives the consumer peace and the rest of the role players also are at ease. And just remember this, ultimately, you're an ambassador of this industry. If you don't see yourself as that, unfortunately, then we go back to point one. It means you're not proud to become of this industry. You're an ambassador. You're not small. You are a big, significant part. And if we cut you out, we compromise ourselves. Moving on to the next slide, just to give you a basic outlook of what we do you know, as the marketing PR and what our plans are for the industry at large. It's reputation management. You know, that's perception shifting. This whole thing of people limiting what we can do and what we offer to the, the public at large. We are there to correct that narrative. You know, internal support for people like yourselves where you find uh, things challenging, where you've got your industry organizations that are there to assist. And commercializing and digital media, that's so important. We, you'll see in uh, my next slides that we have invested in getting the message out there, the value out there. And that's gonna obviously uh, uh, connect to role play engagements, search engine optimization, brand perception value. Let's forget the big words. Ultimately, we are investing in growing this industry internally and externally. Now, visions and goals. The first one I mentioned, changing the perception around the plumbing industry. Enhancing the channels of communication within the industry role players. I think we've identified that maybe communication has been a bit of an issue, but that's universal. That's not just within our industry. But the good thing is if we can notice it, it means there's interest and that's going to enhance activity. We just need to control the information flow and making sure that participation is there. And then creating an exciting vision around the industry. Ultimately, it's what we said in that first slide where you have to add some value, bring your contributions. It's not limited to certain people. You can play the part in sharpening the vision as well, introducing the next generation, expanding the current networks and placing the plumbing industry in the same pool as large industries. Value, value, value. Now here's the value proposition. I did say it earlier. We transport the most important commodity on earth. Do you understand that we are linked to all industries? We are the reason why humanity survives. If there's any distortion in the services we offer, 
they could be a huge complication when it comes to life. We've just experienced COVID-19. Now imagine if plumbers globally decided to make a strike or take a strike for a day, just one day, let alone an hour. You think about what could happen. And I think when people can understand that, that's when automatically they, they see the value we bring. We're connected to all the industry. There's no industry that can tell us we're not connected to them, you know? And I've always shared this question to the industry, um, um, I guess, industry experts, that what is our contribution to our economy? Every industry brags about, and this is homework for you as well, every industry brags about we've added 18% to the GDP in 2021. We need to get that stat because that's a bragging right. That's going to give us more value. So that's a task to the experts, but that's also a task to you. You know, play with your thoughts and see where, how much we or think about how much value we bring and contribute. But what we offer in the industry and what people know about our industries are miles apart. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make people understand that, hey, there's so much value. Steve, Steve Brown always says, you know, we've got so, and Brendan as well, and Opsa, he always says, we, we do so much for the industry, but only we know. You know, the people out there don't know. And that's why people like myself, as well as other people that have been brought within the industry, experts that are good at getting the message out, have been invested in so that the industry can get value out of that. Here's a nice one. We are a solution to the National Development Plan. I didn't say a solution for all, but I believe we're part of the solution. We bring opportunity, value from an employment angle, we must be honest. You know, young people haven't really been given the opportunity to understand how great this industry is. Hence, they don't make this industry their first option, neither their second option. Usually, I'll be a plumber if things didn't work out. You know, and I think we're going to see a ripple effect of passionate young people coming in and literally becoming a part of this industry. But we are also a solution because there's so many opportunities. I say this all the time. I don't like this example of, I want a piece of the pie. No, no, no. Get that mindset out. In this industry, we've got baking powder. Man, we've got flour. We've got chicken. We've got pepper. Steak. We make pies. There's more than enough. There's a technical side to it. There's an administrative side to it. There's an entrepreneurial side to it. The opportunities are endless. This is the longest last industry and will probably be the industry that will be there for as long as humankind exists so there's no limitation there's enough for everyone but we inform and protect the consumer and we empower the plumber and i want to jump into i'm going to skip these i want to go straight into this section which is so important and uh, this one the fourth industrial revolution digitizing ladies and gentlemen this word gives people <laughs> You know, one gets nervous as soon as they hear this. For IR, for IR, um, Facebook. Is he talking about Facebook again? No, I'm not talking about Facebook per se. I'm talking about an, uh, a revolution that's taking place globally, that's going to affect all industries. And yes, it has to do with either your phone or your laptop, but it's moving away from writing everything. It's getting communication across quicker, getting messages across quicker. And it's so important that we adapt to this. And I'll give an example. When you said to, we've been on the road shows last, and when you mentioned to some of the plumbers, hey, um, can you just give me your email? They would be saying, I don't have an email. Ah, you know, or can you go onto our Facebook just to get some more information? Like, I don't have a Facebook account. And I know we live in times where different generations lived in different generations and different times and different things we used. We used the typewriter, then had a PC, now they're laptops, but things evolve. And if you want to adapt and grow quicker, you need to make sure you at least are trying. You know, you cannot let intimidation break you down from opportunity. The full IR is as easy as it seems, but it's not as difficult as it seems. It's just like driving a car. At some point, we didn't know how to step and balance the clutch with the brake. And it was so intimidating. But until we got into it, that's when you realize, oh, I do have the ability to 
do this. I'll say, I'll give an example. Sending an email is just an advanced form of SMS that can be sent to even more people than just the people you can send into an SMS. And this time you can have an attachment in there, you know, going onto websites, creating a website, digitizing your company, you will reach so many more people by just trying and investing into the, the fourth industrial revolution, digitizing era. You, right now, imagine if you are making a profit and you haven't even invested in your marketing on Facebook and Instagram. So it means you're doing okay, but you haven't reached your maximum potential. And what I will say is you'll never know how to swim until you get to the deep side. At some point, we were all at risk in drowning, but we took, you know, caution. We were very cautious. And that's the approach you should take. I want to know how to swim. I want to know how to act with the industrial revolution so that I can enhance my company, enhance my services, get my value out there so that I can reach more. But here's the thing. It's not just about you. If you digitize and adapt to the fourth IR, you enhance the industry at large. See, the more we all do that, the more we all approach it in this manner, the more it affects the overall objective. Ultimately, remember, we're aiming to reach gold standards or gold status. If we can actually not fear or not be intimidated, yes, let's start. Some of us, maybe it's just not going to get it. But if you know, and one of my mentors always taught me this, look at your strengths and if you have weaknesses, Find someone to assist you in that section. Invest in it. And that's where you measure your ROI because you'll see activity around your organization, around your services growing. But don't just sit and continue operating without adapting to what is currently happening. I'll give an example. At some point, we used to all buy newspapers. You know, every morning, and we used to read the Heiskanua Dram U magazine. It was a, it was almost like a norm and a culture. But these books are not all there on the shelves anymore. And even the publishers know that we are shifting. They all have gone digital. They are online. So you're going to be missing out on the content you need to receive to feed your mind because you haven't adapted to this. And that's the same thing. You are creating limitations to the consumers and you're giving opportunity to people that aren't operating as professional as they should be, you know, because the more you get caught there, the more we will reach masses, but it's everyone's responsibility. I must admit, in conclusion, we do not have all the answers as the industry organization. I would really dare you and I would really challenge you to take ownership of your industry. You yourself as an individual, Take ownership, invest in yourself, invest in the people around you. You will be more rewarded. But if you are waiting and just waiting and waiting for change, it's going to be a very slow progress to ultimate success. I'm not saying it won't be achieved, but I can tell you now, this is a quicker and more effective tool. It's not shortcuts. It's adapting. It's knowing how to navigate. So, Ultimately, the fourth industrial revolution, when you hear about this, please don't just change the channel on TV or whatever. Just take time to analyze. You know, it's digitizing. It's shifting away from doing things practically, physically writing down, whereas you can get it out there on a software and, and get the message across to 10 times or even 100 times more people than what you could have if if, if you were still doing things the same way. But ultimately that was the purpose of this webinar to ensure that you understand your role. You're a key role player. You're the heartbeat of this industry. We are, the, the, the industry at large, the industry organization has invested, much invested into changing the perception through various media channels. You will be hearing us on commercial radio and television and digital media, you'll see and take pride because it's your industry. But more than anything, do not be intimidated by digitization. It's just there to make life easier and to achieve better progress and success. I hope I've covered everything and I really hope that you've understood. And please feel free to contact me at any time 
just to engage or if I can assist where I am or where I can, I would really love to because at the end of the day, my role is to engage role players and you fall part of that. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And from my side, that is it. I'll just wait for the questions and I'll take, I'll give it back to you, Byron. Thank you very much, Rondani. I think that was a, a very nice presentation, very informative one that um, people don't need to be scared about social media and they can really use it to benefit the their companies. Yes, 100%. Um, Thank you, Byron. Is there anything you'd like to add, Steve? Yeah, morning, everyone. Uh, I had the privilege of spending some time with Rondani last week. We were up in uh, Richards Bay, and I, I've just got to say that... Uh, just as we've had this morning, a bit of an eye opener in terms of, of the opportunities that are there and how it was received in terms of those in attendance at the meeting. And it was like a, the penny had dropped. I think it's like we all hear and do and say, but you know, there's so much more in terms of the fourth industrial revolution, in terms of where we need to be a part of it, participate and use it to our advantage. And I think uh, the message certainly got across. Uh, to those in attendance, and uh, I just want to thank Rindani and you know PIRE and an IOPSO, you know, for what they're putting into industry. Uh, again, it's like having the keys to the car, but you, you're not going to be able to drive it unless you put the key in the ignition. So, I think what we've all got to do is get out of our comfort zones. I'm one of those when he starts going Instagram and this, that, I'm old school. Um, so I'm looking at go, yeah, okay, what, what is this now? Yeah, what's this new one coming up? But, uh, you know, I'll come home and ask the grandkids or the kids and say, what's this that Rindani was talking about? So it's about opening up our minds, opening up opportunities. And the world is, is, is very small when it comes to the technology that's there. Uh, everybody's on Facebook except me, but everybody's there, everybody's out there and you can get your message across. And I think that's the key thing for us is that uh, Rondani said last week, the days of dropping flyers in post boxes and in ads um, is certainly over. I mean, at one click of a button, you can get to your target market. You can have the exposure in terms of work that you've done or great projects or just any specials you've gone on, whatever. So I think that there's a massive opportunity there for us to be able to get that exposure. So I just want to thank Rondani. He certainly opened up my eyes the time that I've spent with him and, and, and where we're going with this. So well done. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Much appreciated.